Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, let's learn all about the Roman numeral chord system, a system used for a long, long while to name chords in a chord progression for pretty much any chord, all the way from simple triads to all your fancy jazz extensions, right? So first of all, why do we need Roman numerals in the first place? Why can't we just go and write F, a minor, B flat major and C. You know, why can't we just write something like this, you know, F, A minor, B flat and C. So this tells you what chords to play. But then you may find that you'll have another system which shows off something like this. One, small Roman three, big Roman four and big Roman five. So a system like this can be very helpful when you're trying to transpose music on pretty much any scale, sort of on the fly, especially when you're in recording studios or when you're at concerts or your singer just needs to change the scale very different from the original key of the song. So it's very important to know that there are 12 scales in music, right? And if you're playing a song or if you've rehearsed a song on one of those 12, doesn't mean that you're going to play on that one. You may have to change it depending on your song, depending on the singer, depending on various factors in your music. Or maybe you just want to do a scale change at the end of the track, right? So Roman numerals can be very interesting and very easy to even understand the purpose of the chords and the function of the chords in the music. Right, so before we get started with Roman numerals, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the major scale and all its intervals and then the other intervals as well which are not part of the major scale. Then we will use that information to move forward with Roman numerals. Right, so first off if I take a major scale like let's say C major, everyone's favorite I guess, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, Okay, and then the high C. The first thing you'll notice, these are all your major intervals. You have the root, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and of course the octave. Now in addition to this, you also have notes which are not part of this, the C major scale or the major scale in general. You have a D flat, what do we call that now? We call that the minor second, okay? Then we have E flat, which is between D and E. What do we call that? We call that as the minor third, which is part of a lot of the minor scales, like the melodic minor, the harmonic minor, or the natural minor, and so on, right? Between E and F, there is no note, because that's what we do in a major scale. We have one step between the third and the fourth. And then between the F and the G, you have a very interesting note called the tritone, or the F sharp or G flat with respect to C. What do we call that again? The tritone, or the diminished fifth, or the augmented fourth, there are many names for it. Between G and A, we have something called as A flat, okay? And what do we name that? minor sixth, okay, between the fifth and the sixth. And then between A and B, we have the B flat. What do we call that? The minor seventh. And lastly, between B and C, well, there's nothing really because it's one step, right? So just note that the Roman numeral system is going to be used to symbolize the chords within the scale. It's not there to symbolize notes. It's for chords, okay? So with this backing knowledge, we'll first build Roman numerals from the major scale and then just try and go a little beyond. So in the major scale, let's just look at the chords of a simple major scale first, like C major. We say C major, which is the one major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and the seventh chord is called as B diminished. So now let's try and apply Roman numerals to these particular chords. The C chord is the one chord of the C major scale. So because it is the one degree or the one function, we give it Roman one. And it is a big Roman one. Why big Roman? Because it's a major chord. So whenever you're writing major chords, you use a big Roman one. Coming to the two, the two is minor, D minor. So we write two minor and what is the Roman for minor? Small Roman two. The three is also a minor as we know in chord theory. We write it using small Roman three. The four is major, 
big Roman 4, the 5 is also major, big Roman 5, the 6 is minor, small Roman 6, the 7 is diminished. So for a diminished chord, we do small 7 and a degree sign, like a 30 degree angle kind of a thing, right? And if you have to build further extensions of this harmony, it's not too big a deal. You can do something like one major seventh, or you could even do something like one triangle. Triangle also gives you a major seventh uh, symbol. You can do two minor seventh, or you can even do two minus seven like that on the top. Similarly, three minor seventh, okay? of 4 major 7th, 5 dominant 7th, 6 minor 7th and then you also you have this 7 half diminished chord which we either write using phi or you can even write it using 7 minus 7 flat 5, right? So essentially the Roman number stays its ground while all your chord extensions or bigger chords like 9s or if you're writing something like a uh, 5, 7, flat, 9. Something like this. Why not? I mean, that's fine. But as long as it's the 5 function. Okay, let's recap. Major scale, 7 chords. Big 1, big 4, big 5. Why? Major chords. Big Roman 1, big Roman 4, big Roman 5. Minor chords. Small 2, small 3, small 6. Okay because it's minor, so small Roman. Then you have your diminished chord, which is seven, right? So let's move on. Now, if you're within the key of the major scale, Roman numbers are sorted. However, what if you want to bring in a chord which is not part of the major scale, just like that, to kind of make it exciting, I guess, maybe a few secondary dominant chords or just a few other borrowed chords from other scales, perhaps. You just want other chords, you know. So let's say you have a chord progression, which I'm using Roman numerals for at the moment. I have the one. Then maybe I have the three. And normally you will have a small Roman three for minor. In this case, I'm having a big Roman three. Right, and then I have a big four, and then I want to end with a small four. So, what does a small four mean? Four minor. So, the two chords which are actually not part of the major realm are the three major and the four minor at the end. The four minor giving you a nice minor plagal cadence, right? So, if I have to play this on the key of something, let's say C major, the chords are going to be C, which is Roman one major. It's going to be E major, which is the third. That's how you count it. Three is the major third. And then you'll have your um, F major, which is Roman four. And then you'll have your F minor, which is four minor, right? And it's important to note that E major and F minor are not part of the C major domain. So it sounds like this. C major, ba -da -da -da, E major. Ba -da -da -da, F major ba -da -da -da, F minor ba -da -da, C major da -da -da -da, 3 Big 3 major da -da -da, Normal 4 ba -da 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 -da, F4 minor Back to tonic Okay, right. So all of these intervals which we use for the current chord progression are still major scale intervals. We use the root, the major third, but a different chord which is non-diatonic to the major scale from the major third. Then we took the perfect fourth major which is diatonic to the major scale and perfect four minor which is non-diatonic. However, you could also do something like this. You can do Roman one. However, you can also do something like this. You can take the Roman 1, maybe you can do a Roman 5, which is diatonic. And then maybe you could do something interesting. You could do a 6 flat major. Let me explain that shortly. Then you do a 7 flat major and then you loop that and see how that works. So if I have to spell this out for the C major domain, it would be C major. G major, A flat major, 
and B flat major. Now, how do we count that? 6 flat, major 6th is what again? A, minus 6th with respect to C, A minus 1, which is A flat. Okay, let's see how that works now. So, C major, G major, A flat major, awesome chord, B flat major, and maybe back to C. Right? So, this is a great way to kind of denote chords which have the same interval from the major scale, but then you're changing major to minor. Or it's a great way to even choose chords which don't even have the same interval from the major scale. Right guys, so we've so far looked at Roman numerals, first of all from the point of view of the major scale. And then we've sort of looked at borrowed chords where you're taking the same function but changing the chord from major to minor or minor to major. And then we do non-major scale interval chords like 6 flat major or you know... Uh, 3 flat major or some something like that. So let's now look at forming Roman numerals for a scale which is not major. Maybe the next most popular one which is possibly the harmonic minor. So let's try and write down a scale C harmonic minor if you will. C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B and then the high C. And it's important to observe that your 3 is flattened, your 6 is flattened, and your 7 is natural. That means your 7 stems from the major scale itself. Right, so we've written down the C harmonic minor scale. Let's now build the Roman numeral versions of all the chords of pretty much any harmonic minor scale. So you'll have the 1 minor or C minor in this instance. You'll have the 2 diminished or D diminished in this instance. Uh, the 3 is a little bit interesting. It forms what's called as an augmented chord. So what I'm going to first write here is 3 flat because why 3 flat again? 3 flat kind of tells us that it is not part of C major scale. It is a flattened third, thus C flat. And then E flat builds an augmented chord. So it's always Roman numeral with the flat or sharp depending on whether it's major or minor and then you put the symbol of the chord which for major will be capital Roman, minor will be small Roman, uh, diminished will have that degree and now we've learned with an augmented chord it has that plus sign. <clears throat> Moving on, the 4 is your 4 minor, F minor. The 5 is actually a major which is G major. Now the 6 is interesting because it's a 6 flat with respect to the major scale. How does harmonic minor differ from major again? The 3 is the flat and the 6 is flattened. So I'm going to now write 6 flat major because the 6 note forms a 6 major chord, 6 flat major chord. And finally the 7th note or the natural 7th forms a diminished chord. So this is how we are writing it. Just make a note that this is subject to interpretation or subject to different Roman numeral convention. Some people could just write a capital 3 augmented or a capital 6 augmented if you are referencing the harmonic minor. But I just choose to reference the major scale. The Roman numeral system is also subject to your usage because it's ultimately for you. It's a personal thing. It's for you to change the scale or to understand the song better for your perspective. So I am right now calling it 3 flat with reference to the major scale, which is considered very, very common. So right guys, so we've seen quite a few ways to learn Roman numerals, right? We first off built Roman numerals within the major scale, haven't we? We've used 1 major, 2 minor, 3 minor, 4 major, 5 major, 6 minor, 7 diminished. Then we looked at building chord progressions. You can do a chord progression like 1, 5, 6, 4. You see how I wrote the 6 using small numbers, small Romans. And then you can also do changes like instead of 4 natural you can do 4 minor here. Right? Even though the 4 minor did not come from the major scale, you can use it. And you just have to know it's not 
part of the normal major scale. It is a chord built from the four of the major scale, but it is not major, it is minor. And then we also looked at how you can build Roman numerals to, to create much bigger chords. For example, C, 7th, flat, 9 or something could also be written as maybe 5, 7, flat, 9 or some such thing, depending on the number or depending on the degree from the scale. And last but not least, we looked at forming Roman numerals with other scales. Today we took the harmonic minor scale, but you could do it for other scales as well. Right guys? So hope you found this lesson useful for Roman numeral writing. It's a great technique to kind of generalize your chord progression for any song which, you're, which you've composed or which you're going to be playing. And it's a good way to collaborate with people as well, uh, which demand you to change chords on the fly and just quickly kind of play things. So generalize the chords using Roman numbers and then move it to any one of the 12 scales. That's pretty much the, the gist of today's lesson. Again, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. I'd encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Share the video with all your musician friends. Like it. Comment. Let us know if you'd like us to teach you something else. And as always, keep rocking and cheers.